Throughout American history, we've become acquainted with a number of notable industrialists and entrepreneurs. You have people like Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and Andrew Carnegie that helped bring America into the 20th century. In our more modern era, you have notable people in the tech industry like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs that helped to form companies that have brought a number of notable new technologies. In the Fallout universe, we have a similar type of individual in the form of Robert House, who is the proprietor of the New Vegas Strip and plays a big role in Fallout New Vegas' plot. Oddly, we don't really hear much about him in Fallout 4, and while I suppose there is an interesting terminal entry from Imogene Cabot that mentions his first name, it's possible that might not even be him. Not to mention that even if it is him, that terminal entry is dated well before the events of Fallout New Vegas, let alone the events of Fallout 4. So today, I'd like to discuss what I think ultimately happened to Mr. House and what he might be up to during the events of Fallout 4. But I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss Mr. House's origins. Robert House was born on June 25th, 2020 in the pre-war era and was known for being the CEO and founder of Robco Industries. Through Robco, House was responsible for the development of several important technologies. For example, the operating system you see on all the computer terminals, several of the different robot types like Protectrons, Sentrybots, or Assaultrons, and perhaps most importantly, the development of the Pip-Boy could all be credited to Mr. House in some way. Though, it's upon asking Mr. House how he saved Las Vegas that he reveals a fair amount about his backstory leading up to and shortly after the Great War. By 2065, I deemed it a mathematical certainty that an atomic war would devastate the Earth within 15 years. Every projection I ran confirmed it. I knew I couldn't save the world, nor did I care to, but I could save Vegas, and in the process, perhaps save mankind. I set to work immediately. I thought I had plenty of time to prepare. As it turned out, I was 20 hours short. On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted Las Vegas and its surrounding areas. My networked mainframes were able to predict and force transmit disarm code subsets to 59 warheads, neutralizing them before impact. Laser cannons mounted on the roof of the Lucky 38 destroyed another nine warheads. The rest got through, though none hit the city itself. A suboptimal performance, admittedly. If only the platinum chip had arrived a day sooner. The platinum chip was printed in Sunnyvale, California on October 22nd, 2077, the day before the Great War. It was to have been delivered by courier the following afternoon, but by then, the world had ended. The chip contained vital software upgrades, but not just for my Securitrons. Every aspect of the missile defense grid would have been upgraded too. Given that I had to make do with buggy software, the outcome could have been worse. I nearly died as it was. Software glitches set off a cascade of system crashes. I had to take the Lucky 38's reactor offline, lest it melt down. For nearly five years, I battled power outages and more system crashes until I finally managed to reboot my data core with an older version of the OS. I spent the next few decades in a veritable coma, but I survived, obviously, and eventually thrived. So as Mr. House describes, he recognized that a nuclear conflict would occur, and while he felt he couldn't prevent it from happening, he did make moves to ensure that he could save New Vegas, and perhaps by extension, save mankind. 
Unfortunately, the timing of the Great War caught Mr. House off guard, as the platinum chip he had ordered didn't arrive in time, thus leaving him without the vital software upgrades that he needed for both his Securitrons and his missile defense grid. While Mr. House managed to save New Vegas without his much needed software, it almost killed him and put him in a coma for the next 61 years until he awoke in 2138. It wasn't until 2274, the year that the NCR arrived at Hoover Dam, that Mr. House once again sprang into action. Upon asking Mr. House what he did to restore New Vegas, he says the following. We can discuss this in greater detail at another time. Suffice it to say that when my Securitrons detected NCR scouts at Hoover Dam, I took action. I recruited a tribal force to supplement my Securitrons and renovated the Strip just in time to welcome the NCR as it marched into the region. Instead of war, a treaty was negotiated and the money started to pour in. So Mr. House recruited a number of tribals, which would become the three families, and then renovated the Strip in preparation for the NCR's arrival. Once the NCR actually did arrive, he struck a treaty up with them that would later become known as the Treaty of New Vegas. As a result of this treaty, Mr. House would maintain control of the New Vegas Strip, thus preventing the Strip from being annexed by the NCR. In return, the NCR would be granted the right to establish military bases at both Hoover Dam and the McCurran Airport, plus the NCR would effectively run Hoover Dam and benefit from the majority of the power and water that it produces. Ultimately though, the New Vegas Treaty allowed Mr. House to get the extra time that he needed to acquire the Platinum Chip. And in 2281, the platinum chip was found and it was to be delivered to the New Vegas Strip by the Mojave Express. The Mojave Express hired the courier, who was intercepted by Benny and subsequently shot in the head. At this point, the courier is nursed back to health and upon exiting Doc Mitchell's house, the events of fall at New Vegas effectively began. Will the courier retrieve and deliver the platinum chip to Mr. House as the Mojave Express intended, or will the courier decide to take a different course of action? As of Fallout 4, we can't really say what happened during the events of New Vegas, let alone what happened to Mr. House. What we can say for sure though is that out of the four endings for New Vegas, three of them consist of Mr. House being defeated and ultimately being eliminated from interfering in the Mojave's future. However, the player can also decide to side with Mr. House and help him establish a technological autocracy as a part of his own ending. So I think it's fair to say that by the events of Fallout 4, Mr. House has either been defeated or he is the ruler of New Vegas. But let's discuss Mr. House's fate if he were to be defeated in Fallout New Vegas. It's safe to say that if Mr. House was defeated in New Vegas, he would likely be dead by the events of Fallout 4. While Mr. House can be killed by the player once he's emerged from his isolation chamber, merely opening the chamber results in his death anyway. This is because his immune system wouldn't be able to handle the exposure to all of the outside contaminants. Or at the very least, that's what Mr. House seems to imply upon speaking to him after you've opened the isolation chamber. Exposed germs, a year of life, if at most. Effectively, removing Mr. House from the chamber is killing him, and even if you disable him, the exposure to outside contaminants will kill him within a year. Thus, by 2287, Mr. House is likely no more if either the NCR, Caesar's Legion, or Yes Man is chosen. With this said, even if Mr. House did somehow manage to survive exposure to outside contaminants and was merely disabled, he seems to imply that this fate would be worse than death itself. No! Don't disable! Cerebral! 
I'd rather be killed. Just kill me. Either way, if you ask me, Mr. House dies as soon as he leaves the isolation chamber. So by the events of Fallout 4, it's likely that Mr. House is dead if he managed to lose during the events of New Vegas. Where things actually get interesting though, is if Mr. House not only manages to survive, but also manages to win and become the sole power in the Mojave. As Mr. House's ending for New Vegas indicates, he would take control of both Hoover Dam and the Strip, and then finish off the remaining forces of both the Legion and the NCR. With both factions out of the way, and his upgraded Securitrons, Mr. House should be able to finally run New Vegas as he sees fit, as he describes in the following bit of dialogue. New Vegas is more than a city. It's the remedy to mankind's derailment. The city's economy is a blast furnace in which can be forged the steel of a new rail line running straight to a new horizon. What is the NCR? A society of people desperate to experience comfort, ease, luxury. A society of customers. With all that money pouring in, give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years, and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years, and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. I prefer the term autocrat. I would rule as the chief executive. I would not answer to a board of directors or any other entity. Nothing to impede progress. If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. My judgment. I have no interest in abusing others, just as I have no interest in legislating or otherwise dictating what people do in their private time. Nor have I any interest in being worshipped as some kind of machine god messiah. I am impervious to such corrupting ambitions. But autocracy? Firm control in the hands of a technological and economic visionary? Yes, that Vegas shall have. What else did you want to discuss? So as you can gather, Mr. House would effectively become an autocratic supreme leader that would bring about an age of new technological prosperity. As Mr. House says, in 20 years he could reignite the high technology sector, in 50 he could have people in orbit, and in 100 years he would send colony ships to search for new planets to inhabit. And I for one could see this being a plausible outcome, especially when you consider that Mr. House's company, Robco is largely responsible for a lot of the robotics and computer tech in the Fallout universe. And once House has the Platinum chip, upgraded Securitrons, and no competition from either the NCR or the Legion in the Mojave, what's really stopping him from building the type of society that he wants? It's safe to say that by the events of Fallout 4, Mr. House would have likely transformed New Vegas into something entirely new maybe something that's totally unrecognizable from what was. It's also possible that New Vegas and the entire Mojave region could be returned to its pre-war state, and in time, it may eventually surpass what was once possible in the pre-war era. Now, I mentioned earlier that on some level, we can't really be sure if Mr. House won or was defeated in Fall at New Vegas. And while a significant number of people in the community assume that the NCR wins at the end of New Vegas, and basically the NCR ending is the canon ending, we don't really have any way to verify this in Fallout 4. While the NCR is mentioned in Fallout 4, it's mentioned by Kellogg, and he doesn't really have much to say about what happened in the Mojave because he was in the Commonwealth when the events of New Vegas occurred. If I had to take a guess though, I would say that Mr. House was likely defeated for a couple of different reasons. To start, if Mr. House was in complete control of the Strip, you would think that he would want the whole world to know that fact. After all, when the Courier asks Mr. House what his plans are for New Vegas, he talks about money and how he sees the NCR as a society of potential customers. 
Assuming Mr. House was able to convert the NCR into a bunch of paying customers, it seems like he would want others to know about the success of New Vegas so he could have even more money pouring into the city. Perhaps the sole survivor and everyone else in the Commonwealth would be hearing about the technological splendor of New Vegas and the cities out west. The fact that we aren't likely means that Mr. House didn't win. Something else that's worth considering is that Mr. House would have likely developed valuable technology between the events of Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 that possibly could be exported from the west to the east via traders. For example, let's say that Mr. House developed some kind of incredible medical or weapons technology. It's likely that whatever he developed would be sold in the eastern parts of the American wasteland, and the fact that we're not hearing about it or seeing anything like that in Fallout 4 also points to the fact that Mr. House is likely dead. You also have to consider Fallout 4's iBots that are occasionally found roaming around parts of the Commonwealth. While it's likely these were originally used by the Enclave in the post-war era to spread propaganda, like we sort of saw in Fallout 3, it's worth mentioning that Mr. House's very own Robco Industries was responsible for developing iBots in the first place. And I guess what I'm getting at is, what would be stopping Robert House from using iBots to spread his own propaganda? At least to me, it seems like he would want to do that in an attempt to get more customers for his future society. And the fact that he isn't using iBots this way may, again, mean that he's dead. Ultimately, my thinking is, is that if Robert House is alive during the events of Fallout 4, it seems like he would have made his presence known during the events of Fallout 4. And because he didn't, he is likely dead. So I guess if you're wondering what happened to Mr. House by the events of Fallout 4, he's dead. And if you ask me, it's sort of a shame that that's the case. Not only would it have been nice to see a link between Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4, like we see pretty often with Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, but I also think that Mr. House was a pretty interesting antagonist that was ultimately underutilized. Unlike the Enclave or maybe even the Institutes, Mr. House seemed to care about mankind's future, as is evidenced by some of what he has to say about the Brotherhood of Steel. You don't see them raiding hospitals to cart away auto docks or armfuls of prosthetic organs. No, they greatly prefer the sort of technology that puts people in hospitals, or graves, rather, since hospitals went the way of the dodo. Perhaps Mr. House will return in some capacity in a future game that takes place before the events of New Vegas, but I think we're just going to have to wait and see. Otherwise, guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.